morning, good morning, body of Christ. Good morning, everybody. Hallelujah in the sanctuary. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing on this great day? A wonderful day, another day that we can honor the true and living God, amen? Our invitation on this morning, this place men are to worship. Salvation is here. The Shekinah glory is here. Amen. We are all here on this morning to worship the true and living God. We are all the true worshipers, right? Where are the true worshipers on this morning? Can I get a thunderclap of praise from the true worshipers on this morning who came to worship the true and living God? The high praise go to God on this morning, amen. Let us worship the Father in spirit and in truth on today, hallelujah. And John 4 and 24, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, amen. The Messiah, which is called the Christ, is here on this morning so come see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living at shekinah glory powerhouse amen glory be to god hallelujah 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 glory 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 the shekinah is here the Shekinah glory is here, hallelujah. Oh, worship him, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. He's been good to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes all I can say is, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Jehovah Tiskanu, our righteousness. Jehovah Mekadesh, our sanctification. Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Glory be to God. Jehovah Shema, ever present with us. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Jehovah Re Rohi, Rohi, our loving shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah in the sanctuary. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Father God, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you that you have given us the ability to receive your glory and majesty. Thank you for prevailing power. Thank you for divine influence. Thank you for divine governmental authority. Thank you for faith. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. And most of all, thank you, Lord, for love. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Holy Spirit give us strength to gather the fruits unto eternal. Thank you that we are able to rejoice together on this morning. Amen. Glory be to God. We enter into the labors of Jesus with expectation to reap joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, the most important thing is to know you for ourselves. Glory be to God. So we pray for new souls to be brought to the body of Christ and that they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit on this morning, the Shekinah glory. Hallelujah, God. You are the God that turned water into wine. You are the God that healed the sick and infirm. You are the God that turned the captivity of Zion. For that, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. All glory belongs to you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Agape love is unconditional and never ending. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 
for a copy love on this great day they call Valentine's Day. You ought to thank God for a copy love. Because even when you don't feel love, he still loves you. That's why he gave his only begotten son. Just for you. Because he loved you. When nobody else loved you, God loves you. Hallelujah. We step in this morning to be cured of whatever disease that tries to come near our dwelling. We believe that the angels have come to trouble the waters. Amen. Holy Spirit, you pose a question to us. Will we be made whole? And the answer is yes. Glory be to God. Thank you, God, for curing us. Hallelujah, Jesus, the cure is real, but it comes from the true and living God. For Jesus, you are the antidote in this season. Hallelujah, COVID is real, but Jesus is real, amen. We call on the name of the Lord, and we believe that he hears our cry. Because Christ received the word on today, believe the word on today because it is life, it's true, it's love, grace peace be multiplied unto you on this morning body of christ be blessed and receive your cure from the true and living god amen come on again god i've had have a praise i praise and anticipate but god is great god is good he's been good to us all hallelujah thank you lord jesus for a god so mighty and so good and so great we want to welcome you all this morning to kind of go at powerhouse your recharging station come receive the power of God in the name of Jesus because God is a good God I don't know about y'all but I need to be recharged because God has been so good to me sometimes life situations try to bring you down but you say Lord help me my God thank you Jesus because all of my help comes from the Lord so you shall look up to God when you begin to fall and ask God to help me Lord help me Lord come up higher we ask you all this enjoy the day's fellowship and worship and praise and Shekana Gore Powerhouse and eat the word of God that's coming from Pastor Billy J. Davis Jr., a prophet, apostle, and a pastor of this house that God has appointed in his great ministry, that he's running great for the great ministry. He's placing in beautiful uh, Panama City, Florida, St. Andrews, Shekana Gore Powerhouse. And not only him, but First Lady Sherilyn Davis. A woman that's appointed by God to be able to bring for the word of God and be able to know and share God's word with y'all because God's power is real, y'all. He's placed both of them side by side to run forth this great ministry. So we just ask you all, just eat the word, share the word. Come on now, share the word of God. Somebody need to hear the word of God because somebody need to be lifted up, y'all. So if you're on Facebook Live, share the word. If you're on Zoom, tell somebody to tune in. And if they ain't got no network, they'll say they don't like to come on the computer or anything like that. Tell them they've got conference call. Make a phone call to Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. So y'all be blessed as y'all enjoy God's word. Run and shout of joy. Praise God with a clap in your hands. We ask you all to enjoy y'all day. Y'all have a beautiful and blessed day. And just enjoy God's word. You'll be a blessed day, y'all. Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy of the honor and all the praise. Give God a praise on this morning, for truly he's been good, he's been good, he's been good. He's been very good, hallelujah. We love you, Lord God, hallelujah. And we bless your name on this morning, hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made, hallelujah. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you for opportunity on today. We thank you and we bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank God this morning. We welcome you to Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. We welcome our Facebook fans, our Zoom conference call. We welcome you in the sanctuary on this morning. We love you and we honor you and we thank you for another day to lift up the name of Jesus, for another day to worship him in spirit and in truth. As we stand this morning, we will have our February confession. If you repeat after me, Father God, glory and honor, majesty and power belongs to you. Thank you for this second month of the acceptable year of the Lord. Forgive me my sins and 
pardon my iniquities. Cleanse my heart and my mind. Renew the right spirit within me. Jesus is Lord. Thank you for power to prevail, subdue, and conquer my enemies. Fulfill your word today in my life. Salvation has come. This month, I walk in love and receive abounding grace. Change my life to reflect your glory. Change my situations for the better. Uphold me with your free spirit and the power of your word. River of the anointing, saturate my life. Flow into dry places. Thank you for the tree of life. Thank you for the 12 fruits. Let the leaves on the tree heal the nation. You said, seek ye out of the book and read none of the prophecies in your word shall go unfulfilled. Fill your word this day in my life. Peace flows like a river in my life. Jesus is Lord. Christ has redeemed me from the curse. God is light. I am a child of light. My light has come. Thank you for your open doors, divine provisions, and opportunities this month. I mix the word with faith. My faith makes me whole. My test becomes my testimony. Thank you for miraculous healings in my body. Thank you for turning my captivity. Thank you for divine protection. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, body of Christ, the kind of glory powerhouse, good morning. Another new day, another new day to get it right with God. Thank you, God, for a brand new day, a brand new fresh day in our lives. You woke us up this morning, but you didn't have to do it, but you did. So I say thank you, God. Thank you to our Facebook family. Thank you to everybody on Zoom that's watching us this morning. Just thank God because you got to share another day with him, another full day just to give God a thank you. Uh, I always say faith. We always read the faith population. But what is faith? Webster described faith as complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Second verse is strong belief in God or in the doctrines of religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. We all know God exists. We don't, we don't need no, no doc. We, we know we got his doctrine. This is the Holy Word. It's his word. It's his word. He said faith. Believe in me because I am the true and living God. Abraham was promised the land, but he was promised that he went in faith. Never seen the land, but he got the land. Sarah, 90 years old, the angel of the Lord said, you're going to have a child. But in faith, she knew she had that child. And Romans, Hebrews 11 and 1 say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things to come.
God is faithful. He is very, very faithful. He's on time. All the time he's faithful. So like I said, when you walk in faith, you have a new look. You have a new attitude. You have a new strut to your step. People know, look here, I can't touch him. The enemy know I got to bag up today. So join me right now with our Shekinah Glory Powerhouse Faith Proclamation. The faith of God is what I live by. I live in present truth. I am justified by God's faith. I am redeemed by my faith in the name of Jesus. I am blessed. I'm sorry. Let me. I am healed. My faith in Jesus' stripes. I am strengthened by my faith in God. I am empowered through my faith in the Holy Ghost. I am triumph. Sorry. My faith in God causes my enemies to fall. I triumph through my faith in God. I live by my faith in God. My faith in God makes me whole. God, I believe you. There's words to stand upon this week, body of Christ. Shekinah glory, apostolic stands. Praise and anticipate. Mercy liberates. Grace facilitates. Faith generates. Jesus advocates. Power eradicate. The cross emancipate. The blood exonerate. The Holy Spirit articulate. The word predicates. And like I said, God is faithful. We got to call him. God is very, very faithful. So have a blessed and wonderful week. Believe in God and walk in your faith and strut like it's, like it's a brand new you. Be blessed. Good morning, body of Christ. Good morning, body of Christ. We're here to celebrate the day of our Lord. February 14th in the year 2021. 2021. God, we thank you for letting us live to see this day. I want to start off with a little song that I'm not going to sing. I'm just going to read the words to it. You know, because we today is Valentine's Day. It's that lover's day. You know, that day where we show that physical love uh, to, to one another. But the words of the song says, living he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Burying, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified. Freed me forever. One day, he's coming back. Glorious day. How many of you know that song? Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Burying, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freeing me forever. One day he's coming back. Glorious day. But I want to take just a few minutes here and I want to talk about that. Lover's Day. Valentine's Day. Pastor gave me a little short snippet here and on the top he wrote, Challenged but not conquered challenged but not conquered and I'd just like to incorporate that into what I'm going to say to you this morning you know they say that Valentine's Day is second only to Mother's Day for florist delivering flowers 
men ordering flowers for their significant others. You know, some ordering flowers for their wives, some are ordering flowers for the others, but ordering flowers for our significant others. The second most important day, and they said that's when they make all their money. They wouldn't be able to make it without Valentine's Day. It's that love day. Now, separate here because when we talk about Valentine's Day, we're not talking about agape love because agape love is the love that we have for God, but rather it's filio, that Greek word for physical, physical love. And pastor gave me three words here that he wanted me to expound on for just a minute. These three words are black, white, and red. Black, white, and red. And you know, you say, well, it's easy to see why he would say white and red because today is Valentine's Day and we associate white and red with, with Valentine's Day. You know, we, uh, we this. It's just what we do. But how many of us know that without the blackness, there would be no whiteness? That if there was no night, there would be no day. The sun rotates in a 24 hour rotates 24 hours, not around the sun 24 hours, but the earth rotates on its axis 24 hours. And in that 24 hours, you're gonna get night and you're gonna get day. Proverbs seven and nine says, in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And you know what I was thinking about that? I was thinking about because you know when we were growing up we were we were taught this thing that black is bad and white is good and that's been inbred in our DNA and in our being all of our lives that black is bad, white is good. But like I said, without the black, there would be no white. And if we think about it, if we were honest with ourselves and we actually thought about it, we would think back to some times when it was dark and we had some pleasant experiences. If we were honest with ourselves, and if we were really honest with ourselves, we would say that some of our most pleasant experiences happened during the nighttime when it was dark and it was black. Uh, you know, the old folks had a saying that said, what's done in the dark shall come to the light. You know, because they thought that you were, you know, we say we creep. We creep at night. Nighttime is the time for creeping. You know, we don't do things during the daytime because too many people can see what you're doing. But at, at nighttime, you know, at nighttime, we, you know, we go in. Pleasant things happen during the night. Without the night, there is no dark. There is no day. But, you know, we think of blackness and we think of it being, we think of death as being a black time in our lives. 
Uh, we think of poverty mindset. We think of health issues. We think of all of these things, and we regard them all as 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 dark and as black. And but we know that in all things that Christ is with us, and that sometimes you got to go through, like Pastor said, you just got to go through it. You got to go through that test, and you got to pass it before you can make it to the next one. Let's talk a little bit about white. We've talked about darkness. Let's talk about white. And we generally regard white as cleansing. We want our sheets on our bed to be white. You know, there's just something about sleeping on clean white sheets. With nothing on them, just clean white sheets, no coloring in them, just clean white sheets. But Isaiah 1 and 18 says, Come now, let us reason together with the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. White. White and black. And we think of them as being on opposite ends of a spectrum. But how many of you know that one of them is the absence of all color? And one of them has all color and it's probably not the way you think. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to look it up. Which one has all color? Which one is the absence of color? And then we talk about the blood. We talk about the red. Why are Valentine's red and white? Why are Valentine's red and white? And why are Valentine's shaped in the shape It's not the real shape of a heart, but it's in the figurative shape of a heart. Just want to read something to you here real quick from Leviticus 11th chapter. No, that's not what I want to read. The blood of Jesus is our covering and the blood is what makes us figuratively white. We know that we were born black and we are never going to be white. We're never going to be white as in uh, the color of other people that we deem as white. But the blood of Jesus cleanses us and figuratively makes us white. This blood on the altar signified their acceptance of the covenant and their pledge to obey it. Then Moses read the whole covenant to the people to assure them that no change had been made in the law and this very covenant in its entirety was what they promised to keep. Then after the people had promised to keep all the law, he took the other half of the blood, sprinkled the blood, and all the people, or at least representatives of the people, and considered the covenant binding. Blood binds the covenant we think of we just think of blood as uh, 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 as covering us 
And it does cover us, but in covering us, it's, there is a covenant being made, and, and it's binding a covenant. And that covenant is between us and Jesus. And when Jesus' blood covers us, then that blood figuratively washes away the darkness and makes us light. Black, white, and red. They all have their place. They're all good. Everybody say all good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name this morning, God. Your word says in Isaiah 60, arise and shine. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. This is our season to arise, to ascend and shine. For the light of God has come. And his glory has risen upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name this morning, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together.
King of glory, and the 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 King of glory. He shall arise. He shall arise. He shall arise. He shall come in. He shall. He shall. He shall. Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 14 through 24 now we exhort you brethren warn them that are unruly comfort the feeble minded support the weak be patient toward all men see that none render evil for evil unto any man but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men rejoice evermore pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you quench not the spirit Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Come on, give God a praise in this place. For God is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of the honor. And he is worthy of the glory. Thy word, O oh Lord, have we hid in our hearts. There's power in the word. There's power in the word. How many of you know that Jesus is real? How many of you know he's real? Huh? Praise team, do you know he's real? I said, do you know he's real? Sister! 
wanted it to, I still know he was right there. Y'all didn't hear me. Just because it didn't turn out in a positive way for you, didn't mean he wasn't there. Uh, Y'all didn't hear me. Sometimes you got to go through process, but in the middle of that process, he's right there. Get this word out. 
I'm going to need approximately 32 minutes to get it out, if you'll work with me. But if you'll pray for me, I might can get it out in 25. And if you pray really hard, don't be fake. Because you can't push me. Because I only move by the Spirit. Crowds don't move me. I like a hard crowd because it shows the power of God. Let us pray. Father God, we honor you. And we thank you, God, for you're the God who sits high. You sit upon all thrones, all dominions, upon all principalities, upon all powers, God. You have control of the visible and the invisible world. And for that, we say thank you, God. We thank you, God, for who you are. So, God, I thank you for opportunity to allow me to speak as your oracle this morning. Bless, empower, and strengthen your people as your servant's prayer. I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 With two hands lifted up, begin to bless the Lord. Lift up both hands and begin to bless the Lord. Begin to bless the Lord out of Zion. Come on, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Let God heal the fruit of your lips. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. With both your hands up to tell God you thank him for answered prayer. God, I thank you for answered prayer. I thank you. In the for answered prayer. You may be seated and I, I began to teach now. We read our scripture out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I believe we get, began somewhere around verse 14, went all the way to 24. But in 1 Thess 5 and 18, he says, In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And then he goes over in verse 23, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. Important verse that you highlight, that you bend the page in your Bible, because I want you to go to it all week. I want you to go to that scripture. I, I, you can read all your chapters, you can do whatever you need to do, but for, for me being leader, I'm telling you, I want you to give diligence at least 10 to 15 minutes on verse 23. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what this verse means. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That means completely or fully. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body. We always like to use the word tripartite man. But look at how he put that. It, he said, I pray. To God, that not just your spirit, but your whole spirit, your whole soul, your whole body be presented blameless, my goodness, until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know how I want to, I'm going to focus with the bite drop on spirit. And this week when you're studying, I want you to ask him, how can I develop my spirit man better? Because unless the spirit man is developed, the body going to fail. And the mind is going to fail. And so we have to develop our spiritual man completely. Let me give you a topic to write down. I know you're waiting on one. Giant. I see you. Y'all didn't hear me? I say giant. I see you. You, you see, when it comes to looking at giants, there are three words I, I want you to focus on, and one is perception. How do you perceive the giant? The second word is delusion. Giants often cause people to not think fully or completely. They delude their own thoughts. I, I'll give you a simple example for you to write down in your notes. Many of you think that clubbing was more fun than where you're at right now. 
They neighbor delusion. The third word is acceptance. You have to accept that you are a new creation created in Christ Jesus. Therefore, when you see a giant, he still ought to be a grasshopper. Y'all didn't hear that. See, 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 when you've been born again, when you've been born again and you're looking through the eyes of Christ, there are no, because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And so what has happened is because you have not allowed your mind to learn to deal with a giant, the giant controls you while he's hiding inside of little old tiny you. You see, power must confront presumption because giants are going to come. Let me show you a giant that most people don't know that hides on the inside of them. I've been secretly doing this for years and nobody knows. Tell your neighbor that's a giant. Mm, 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 boy, it got quiet then. Tell your neighbor that's a giant. Because giants come to rob your faith and they come to rob your confidence and they hide within little old tiny you. Yeah, yes, yes, you. you. You're not eight feet tall. You're not 10 feet tall. You're not 20 feet tall. Little old tiny you might have a giant on the inside. And many times because people carry giants on the inside, they don't know how to deal with delay. But sometimes delays come in our life because God is doing divine orchestration. And he allowing you to grow and go. Can you use those two words for me? Can you say go? Go and grow say it again go, go. And, grow. and grow see you'll never grow until you go and most people don't go until they have a confidence or an assurance of where they are going yes you see giants they challenge people and most people think giants come to challenge their faith Listen to me, listen to me with clarity. Is my microphone clear? Because y'all looking at me kind of funny. Is my microphone clear? Is my microphone clear? Is your mind open? Tell your neighbor, turn the reject button off and open up the, re the receive button. Hit that receive button and receive this right here. A giant does not come to challenge your faith. A giant comes to test your fear. <laughs> In other words, the giant comes to look at your fear level, not to test your faith level. Because he know if your fear level is greater than your faith level, he's already won. Oh, uh, y'all didn't like that. I, I told y'all this morning before I started teaching, I was gonna, I was gonna drive the bus, am I right? And say, you never ain't no need you getting sleeping now. I'm not gonna hoop, I'm not gonna holler, I'm not gonna entertain you, but I'm gonna give you a truth. And if you sleep, I'm gonna call your name and embarrass you today. Is that all right? You never stay woke. Say it again, stay awake. You, you see, when a giant comes to check your fear level, he will come sometimes in the form of conflict. Because conflict is a revelator. And when he doesn't come in conflict to reveal something, he'll come in crisis. Conflict is a revelator. Say that. I, I, I got to keep you woke. So I'm going to say conflict is a revelator. And crisis is a demonstrator. So what the enemy does, he allows you to use your mindset that's called recall. And fear utilizes recall just like faith does. So what is it that you're recalling? Are you recalling what people told you to be scared of? Or what or are you recalling what God told you to fear not in his word? You're not teaching well right now. Oh uh, yeah, tell your neighbor, I'm, 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 I'm dealing with that spirit in you right now already. He know I got him. See, see, you thought you came in here and were gonna be clandestine, you're gonna hide some stuff, but you're not hiding nothing today. I'm a giant killer today. Tell your neighbor that giant not going home with you today. Giant, I see you. If 
Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 17. I've got to move. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. Understanding, the understanding has been darkened. They've been alienated from the life of God. Through what? Through the ignorance that's in them because of the blindness of their hearts. He said they, be, they move past feeling. They, they, they don't even look at stuff anymore. But giving themselves over to lasciviousness. And so people look at lasciviousness and they just go with their own presumptive state of mind on what lascivious is. But lasciviousness, most simple, most simplistic, means unbridled lust. See, every lust is not acted upon. Some lusts are just seeds. Uh, it, for future actions. Ooh, don't, 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 don't teach today. Oh, uh, you hear me? See, every lust is not acted upon. Sometimes it's just a seed planted on the inside of you. And you letting it, you think it's dormant, but it's constantly growing. And you're watering it with your thoughts. I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna let me let me, let me teach all you hear me. See, see, and, and it says that they do this to work all uncleanliness. In order they work their impure motives in their mind. Tell you neighbor, don't get convicted now. No, no, let me teach you. Let me teach you. Then let the Holy Ghost wash you. And let the Holy Ghost convict you. Are you hearing me? And he says they, they do this with greediness. That they want even more, my goodness, of what they've been lusting on in their mind. I want it. I want it. I don't have a real church yet. I want it. I planted the seeds in my mind. I acted on it in my mind. But I haven't fulfilled it in my body. And that giant keeps on growing and growing and growing until he gets your body to become servant, my goodness, to your mindset and you compromise the very you. Somebody say, me, 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 me. Lord have mercy. Paul would write into Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaks expressly. And a lot of times, some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Paul told Timothy that there comes a point in time when people will rather focus on what they want to do. If it's a giant, they'll rather focus on what they want to do and they're able to keep their thoughts on that because they have had their minds cauterized. See, when you cauterize something, you hit it with a hard iron, as in branding. And when you put that hot iron on it, it takes away the sensitivity of the nerves or the awareness of what is going on. So you begin to think on a thought, and the enemy brings this hot iron on it. And then he takes away the nerve of you to not do it. So much so that you don't feel any guilt or condemnation when you do it. Oh, Lord, gee, that must be speaking a hot word. I got people going to sleep in here. Because you're not going to leave today and not face that giant that you got in your inventory. Then if you got to put off that giant. You got to put off that giant. Pastor David, what is a giant? A giant is one who has epic proportions. One who's big, one who's large. And I like my word, one who's huge. Think about a huge mindset in your little brain. Okay, neighbor, that's your old man that you don't want to kill. Oh my goodness, Pastor, you're not teaching good today. But giant, I see you. I say giant, I see you. Ain't no word, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no need y'all looking down at the floor. Look, look up here, make eye contact. Giant, I see you. Uh, giant don't like to be called out, are you hearing me? But God said, be renewed in the spirit of our minds. And when we are to be renewed in the spirit of our minds, you know what we have to do? We have to grab our shield of faith. 
And when we grab our shield of faith, are y'all hear me? When we grab our shield of faith, it allows us to garrison our minds, to protect our minds, or to put a fortification around our minds. So much so that no matter what's trying to penetrate, that our minds are already guarded. Somebody say, guard your mind. Oh, y'all don't like what I'm teaching right now. Why am I telling you to guard your mind? Because your mind is a huge, a large, a big warehouse. And, 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 and when you don't look at what's being put in your warehouse, your inventory is going to be all jacked up. Because there are times that you're not supposed to mix certain things together because they become combustible. They, they pose a danger, am I right? And, and because you're not watching what you store in your mind, somebody said that gigantic warehouse. Cut your head, say that gigantic warehouse. In this big, come on, in this big, cut your head. This big old circle right here, this big circle. Your head is not that big, but it's got a whole world in it. I'm not teaching well. <laughs> y'all to, to see how y'all looking at me. But, but see, in that warehouse, you decide your inventory of thoughts. You decide your inventory of emotions. And when you don't watch what you're putting in your warehouse, it's going to translate to actions, to deeds, and behavior. In other words, if you're putting the wrong stuff in your mind, somebody said that big warehouse, it's going to lead to one of two things. It's going to either lead you to stagnation or it's going to lead you to motivation. You're either going to live a life as a stagnant one who's never progressing, not doing anything, or you're going to live as one who says, hold on a minute, I got to be motivated by that which came to destroy me. It came, but it didn't kill me. My goodness. You see the power of the mind. Let's talk about the mind a minute. Tell you your mind, your mind, my mind, my mind. Somebody say, my, my mind, my mind, your mind. Say it again, my mind. Your mind, although it's a warehouse, tell them, although it's a warehouse, it also becomes a theater. Oh, Pastor David, something hurt. Y'all hurting today, ain't it? Pastor, on y'all. Pastor, y'all like, oh, Lord, Pastor David, what are you on? What did you drink last night, Pepsi? Pepsi last night, Pepsi this morning, Pepsi when I get through. Are y'all hearing me? But the power of the mind, because the mind focuses with energy and words. <laughs> it's going to take one of those two things to make the mind work. Imagery or the word. No, 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 no. Y'all don't believe me. You don't believe me. Who can I pick on out there? Raise your hand if I can pick on you. And I'm talking to you. I'm not going to call you by name, but I'm talking to you. Okay. Have you ever looked at a picture that would label a comedy and it made you laugh? It was the imagery and the words that made you laugh. Because had you not tuned into that station, you probably would not have laughed. Let's talk about the power of imagery in the mind. Let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about that, that huge theater that you carry in your mind. And, and, and I'm not trying to pick on ladies, but, but, but ladies tend to do it more than men. Have you ever looked at a picture and all of a sudden it got to a sad point and you found yourself cheering up at a stage event that's broadcast in something electronic that's pulling a human emotion out of you? I don't have real people up in here. You cried because that picture, the imagery, the events you could relate to because you use recall of an emotion that you train yourself to cry on. Because everybody that saw that scene, I don't, how y'all hear me? Everybody that saw that scene didn't what? Cry, am I right? 
because our minds have a capacity to build. But our minds also carry the ability to delay and to destroy. So most people don't use their mind the way it's supposed to. Positive dream. Somebody said positive dream. Wise understanding. Effective communication. See, see, you see the mind looks and then it interprets. And there was this one young lad named David, y'all know him, when he had to face a giant called Goliath. But he didn't face Goliath based on, upon the size of Goliath. Boy, I feel like teaching, but I got to work just a little bit more. Then he got to work just a little bit more. Huh? I got to work just a little bit more. I'm just setting you up right now. Just setting you up. You, 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 you got to know that David faced Goliath, but he faced him with a sober mindset. In other words, David had substantiated, my goodness, David had substantiated his thoughts from a platform of God consciousness. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? David was God conscious. And there was a platform. Somebody say a platform. Say it again, a platform. So, so David saw God first and not Goliath. Because Goliath, my goodness, boy, 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 stop teaching now. Goliath was out taunting God. He was challenging the God of Israel. So David wasn't worried about the size of the giant. David was focused on, hold on a minute, who's speaking against my God? I, see, 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 to me, sometimes y'all get so busy focusing on the giants in your life that you forget that that giant is speaking against your God. Somebody say, my God supplies my need. My God answers my prayers my god destroys giants telling and he'll destroy a giant in your life in my life god will destroy my giants if i stand against my giants you got to look at what's challenging you right now and stop trying to figure everything out. You're wise. You're wise. You're smart. You're gifted. And probably anointed in some areas. But that's not the sum total of getting victory in this life. In this life, we have to face giants. And we have to stop trying to be so smart. And if you're smart, I want you to write the scripture down. I want you to write the scripture down. And I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. I don't want you to tell the Holy Spirit what you're interpreting. I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to tell you how to interpret what he's saying. Are, are you listening to me? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 5. And I want to go in context and teach this is all right. Are you hearing me? So tell you neighbor, he's going with the pretext, the text, and the context of what he's saying. He says in verse 5, as thou knowest not, which is the way of the spirit. So God said, you can't tell anybody what he's going to do with somebody else. You can't tell anyone when that giant on the inside of somebody is going to be destroyed. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 11. In other words, he said, you don't know. My goodness, my goodness. How bones grow in the womb of her that's with a child. Boy, I feel like teaching right there. And in other words, he said, can I talk to you ladies? Can I relate to you? Because ladies, ladies, let me tell you something about a lady. Because most people don't understand this. See, there's something special about a lady that can never be special about a man. Because a lady is a gate. And she's a gateway for life. And a man can never be a gateway. Oh my goodness. For life. He can't be a gateway for life. A, a, a man does not have a womb. Therefore, he can't birth a child. Are y'all hearing me? So ladies, you can relate to this better than men can. Are you hearing me? But the Lord is telling you that why? Are you worrying about how he gonna do something spiritually 
when you didn't worry about if he was making your baby feet first or your baby hands first. He said, you don't know what's coming first. You don't know what's bone development first. You don't know what's coming first. You know that they got. They try to figure it out, and they try to take pictures and know all of that, but you can't tell God what's going to come first. And so all he's saying is that stop trying to think that you have to be delivered a certain way. Your deliverance is going to come. Tell you, neighbor, it's going to come. Tell somebody else, my deliverance is going to come. We have to be like David, and, and we have to be able to see beyond what we're going through. And the only way we're going to do that is to deal with our giants the way they're supposed to be dealt with. A giant must be perceived as a mustard seed. My book told me the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. He said, but it grows up and becomes the largest garden plant there is. And a giant has to be perceived as small, but if we don't deal with him, he's going to grow up big on the inside of our little small frame. Are y'all hearing me? That, that God wants you to know that you got things on the inside of you that's giants. And you haven't addressed them. And it's my job to help you to address them today. Is that all right? See, see somebody feels small because they feel insignificant. And anytime you start feeling insignificant, it'll paralyze your mind. That mind becomes void of hope and destitute of love. It, it, it becomes consumed with hopelessness. Why? Because that mind is looking for love. But the real measure of love is not how someone returns a flower to you. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone, Pastor David. The real measure of love is not how somebody returns a box of candy to you. The real measure of love is will, are you willing to lay down your life for a friend? The real measure of love is do you know how to love yourself because you can't love your neighbor, my goodness, until you love yourself. And so most people don't learn how to love self. They disregard things about themselves. Therefore, it becomes a giant on the inside of them and they never learn how to truly love. They learn how to discriminately love. Oh, Y'all not hearing me. See, if you want to know real love, you don't focus on February the 14th. Because if something meant that much on February the 14th, it should have meant it on February the 13th. And it ought to mean it on February the 15th. If it means that much on the 14th. Oh, y'all don't like me right now. Are you hearing me? If you're putting all of those emphasis on that, and you're trying to make one day be the sum total of who you are, you have a small perspective of self. I'm going to need you to put your hand together right there. Y'all didn't like that. Y'all didn't like that, but put your hand together right there. Let me run that on out of here. You see, some, some want flowers. Yeah, yeah, somebody want flowers. And it's all right that you want flowers. I'm not knocking you for wanting flowers. Just like you want flowers, there's some men that want a date. There are some women that want a date. Everybody wants some form of recognition. But today, the most recognizable thing you can do is speak to the giant in your life. And you need to tell that giant in your life that the day is the day you die. I'm going to show you love by destroying you. Because you came to destroy me. For God so loved the world. My goodness. And so what God is saying is tell the people of God. Let them know that look. That giant has been exposed. Now look at somebody and just point your finger and tell them loneliness must die giant my goodness you gotta die tell that giant he has to die you see there are giants in our lives and giants that we don't want to deal with but we gotta deal with are you hearing me if you gotta deal with that giant there's a giant called poverty oh i should have had a whole church up right then y'all done got comfortable with poverty but poverty ought to be your enemy Poverty ought to make you mad. But I wish I had somebody who would say, Poverty, you overgrown bully. You come to me with bills 
that outweigh my income. But today, I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Oh, glory to God. The God of the army of Shekinah. Oh, glory. Whom you defy. Ah, oh, no, no, no. See, y'all ain't mad at that guy yet. Y'all ain't mad at him. Y'all done got too comfortable with him. You done got too comfortable with him. But there's a God, my goodness, I, almighty God, who leads Shekinah into battle. His name is Jehovah Shaboah, sir. And I'm telling Jehovah Shaboah, sir, that we need you here. We need you to show yourself mighty and to show yourself strong. So Jehovah Shaboah, sir, we thank you right now for showing up in the midst of our people. Somebody said there is a giant. No, no, said there is. Say it like I said it. There is a giant called sickness. Oh, my goodness. You destroyer of health and vitality. You crippler and afflictor. You who crept in unaware through someone's acceptance. Jehovah Rapha, show up uh, and cancel the assignment of death. Uh, cancel the assignment of destruction. Cancel the assignment of affliction. I shall live and not die. 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 I'll declare your word. I am your witness. I am a witness of your glory. I am a witness of your glory. Depression. Depression. You vision killer. You destroy of hope. Jehovah Shalom. Kill that giant. He is a destiny destroyer. He causes suppression and oppression. But in the name of Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, we cause those things to cease. In the name of Jesus, there is a giant that's been hiding on the inside of somebody for many years. But today I come to tell you that I see you. I'm going to call that giant called child molestation. You've been a victim of child molestation. But that giant that was on the inside, I destroy him in the name of Jesus. There's somebody else that's been living with that giant called abortion. We destroy him in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's another giant that's been hiding on the inside that's called rape. But we destroy that giant called rape. Somebody got another giant that they're looking at. And that giant is called perversion. But old, old giant of perversion, you are destroyed in Jesus' name. You see, those giants have been hiding for years and you've been coming to church bringing that baggage with you but if there's a praiser in the house if there's a believer in the house if there's somebody knowing that God is still berating them today I want you to begin to move those feet and give God a glorified praise come on give him that praise that sets down pushment on the enemy give him that praise that removes the reproach and the shame that the enemy crippled you, crippled you with. That modern day giant, tell him he gotta go. He has to go. Tell him he gotta go. Stop, say this. Say giants die. Giants die. Giants die. Come on. In my life, in my life, say it all. Turn it prophetic. Giants die. 
is in the power of your tongue. Death and life is in the power of my tongue. Say that. Death and life is in the power of my tongue. Death and life is in the power of my tongue. Hold up a minute now. What you refuse to face and what you refuse to say, you saying, I love that giant. That giant called depression. That giant called abortion. That giant called victim of child molestation. That giant called rape. That giant called sickness. That giant called divorce. Are you hearing me? That giant called a bad breakup if you're single. Jai 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 Jai
Either you gonna live or the giant's gonna live inside of you. Somebody say, today I choose life for myself and not my past, choosing my destiny. Somebody say, a new beginning, a new day, a new opportunity, a new hope, a new grace, a new mercy. A new mercy, a new grace, a new mercy. Let's get forty five check on praise. There's a giant called affliction. But the Bible told us that affliction shall not rise a second time. You search it out, you'll find it. it's in there. What does that mean, Pastor Davis? What, what I'm telling you is this. Many of you, God brought you out of something and he brought you through. And because you might be back in it, you think that he forgot you. So there are two words that I want you to focus on this week, if you can remember. Well, five. My math is on. Somebody say, Lord, do a repeat performance. Did y'all get that? The first time he healed you. The first time he delivered you. So all you need them to do is, Lord, do a what? Lock that in your mind. Are you hear me? Bring them on home. Bring them on home. We got to get out of here. I thank you for your time. No, get your grave. Get your grave. It's a great day to be delivered. Uh -huh. I say it's a great day to be delivered. Oh, yeah. But it's an even greater day to, de to destroy or kill a giant. Can anybody feel the David on the inside? Because you'll never feel your David, are uh, you hear me, and kingship until you feel your David as a giant slayer. See, everybody want to be a king and not realize they got to kill a giant. Oh, you know, but sometimes you got to kill a giant. Tell your neighbor's been there a long time. Tell your neighbor you were secretive with it. 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 But, but you got to deal with it now. You got to deal with it. You got to call it out and you got to deal with it. Because your instruction was to go and to grow. 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 You didn't come in. You got to do nothing for me. You can't fool me one way or the other. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not the one. I can't put you in heaven. I can't put you in hell. And I won't try. But I will instruct you with truth. That'll get you in the best position to go to and be all that God has called you to be. See, many people don't know how to accept deliverance because they allow guilt and condemnation to overcome conviction. Conviction is of God. Guilt and condemnation is of the enemy. Because God said, if you confess your sins, 
I am faithful and just to forgive them. He said, if you really, really show that repentance, I'll cast them as far as the east is from the west. And I tell anybody, just you, you don't even have to hold, you the whole world, just use the United States. God said, I, if you really repenting of what you're saying when you talk to him, he'll take your sins that happened in Florida and distance them like California is from Florida. Are y'all here? And he said, I'll remember them no more. It's you, your mind, and your imagery that's pulling back the pleasures of yesteryear. Elder Lee talked about them. He talked about that. He talked about creeping. Oh, y'all, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he called it. He called it MRN because you got to understand something. At some point in time, things can happen in a season and they're fine. But then grace comes and mercy comes and wisdom comes and maturity comes. And we grow. Tell you, but we go and we grow. There may be someone out there that don't know. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of your life. I recommend that you consider him, that you come to him. He is God's son. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. Resurrected on the third day. And all you have to do is by faith start believing. And the Holy Spirit will bear witness and start bearing witness with you. So we thank somebody today for receiving God. We thank you because God is speaking to your heart. And he's telling you to receive him this day. To somebody else's heart, he's saying today you become a giant slayer. Are you not hear me? You don't need a sling and you don't need five rocks. You don't need to try to twist it no kind of way for you. All you need is faith to believe that God empowered you to kill a giant. Tell him, I don't want to maim him. I don't want to maim him. I don't want to cripple him. I want to kill him. And just like David, David, David made sure he killed Goliath because he took his head off. And we know that if you take the head off of the body, the body can't do nothing but rest. Move around and paint. Am I right? Huh? Grace and peace be multiplied until your God's strength be upon you. Have a blessed day. God bless you.